Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Yacono. And I'm Samantha York in for Amanda Hill. Despite what Chris Costa just showed us, there is some positive news on the horizon for Maine kids in crisis who need access to the mental health treatment they desperately need. One hospital in Bangor is expanding. They're adding more beds to its pediatric wing in an effort to meet that very need. But as New Center Maine's Vivian Lee reports tonight, experts say it is just a drop in the bucket. When Northern Light Health's Acadia Hospital opened its doors more than 30 years ago, it was licensed for 100 inpatient mental health beds. Most are semi-private rooms with two beds each. But since most patients can't share a room, 40 beds for children and adults sit empty. Thank you. Dr. John Campbell is the vice president and senior physician at Acadia Hospital. One of the bottlenecks for that is that a lot of the children that are on the wait list do need a private room, and we don't, we don't have that. That picture will change in January when a more than $49 million expansion project is expected to be completed. The facility will still have 100 beds, 50 for adults and 50 for children, but patients will be in their rooms with the privacy Campbell says they deserve. 50 private rooms is a much better experience for the children, for the patients and also for the staff taking care of them. During a recent tour of Acadia's new pediatric wing, Dwayne Albert, the facility's project manager for Northern Light Health, showed us private rooms under construction, plus two different courtyards for children and adolescents. The adolescent courtyard will have a, like a, a reduced size basketball court and some other equipment for them. Patient rooms for adults will also be remodeled. There will also be group spaces for therapy, art, and other activities. The paint colors, lighting textures, and layout are designed to be a safe and warm environment to encourage healing. But Campbell admits the multi-million dollar expansion is not a long-term solution as the demand for mental health services soars. Anything that we do will be helpful, but will not solve the problem. That will continue. In 2022, according to data from the Maine Department of Health and Human Services, nearly 900 children spent seven days on average in emergency departments waiting for a pediatric mental health bed in four hospitals that treat children with serious mental health needs. A crisis that's been exacerbated by severe staff shortages, overwhelming small rural hospitals like Franklin Memorial Hospital in Farmington. We need those beds, and so I, I am happy to see that we need a lot more. Dr. Ross Izaki is the Franklin Community Health Network Chief Medical Officer. During the pandemic, the hospital opened an annex next to the emergency department to handle a crush of kids in crisis. While that strain has eased, the hospital continues to see young patients with severe needs that can't be cared for at home. The kids as young as six or I think even five, which is terrifying. Um, to think that, you know, we have behavior that can't be managed in the community. To the state's largest hospital systems, Northern Light Health operates 10 central and northern Maine hospitals, including Eastern Maine Medical Center. In 2022, the average number of kids waiting in emergency rooms system-wide each month was 21. Dr. Michael Malia is the chief of emergency medicine for EMMC. He tells News Center Maine's Chris Costa that Acadia Hospital's expansion doesn't go far enough to address the ongoing crisis. Not really increasing the number of the volume of patients that they could care for. We could just kind of care for more acute, more acute patients. Maine Health, which operates Maine Medical Center and seven emergency departments, in its system, reports that some children have languished in their EDs for over eight weeks. Katie Harris is the Chief Government Affairs Officer for Maine Health. From January to June 30th of this year, 226 children were stuck in Maine Health emergency departments for more than 48 hours. The average length of stay was five and a half days. Adolescents who are um, coming to the emergency room with significant behavioral health issues but for whom hospital level care is not the right level of treatment. Earlier this year, lawmakers took up a bill that would have required Maine DHHS to open a secure children's psychiatric residential treatment facility for patients with behavioral health and intellectual and developmental disabilities. The first of its kind in the state, supporters say a PRTF would be a safe alternative for treating children in a secure residential setting. Due to the lack of capacity, 
Dozens of children are being sent out of Maine for treatment. We can bring them home where care is closer to natural support systems and even save the state money. DHHS officials testified against the bill, saying that the agency is working to address the crisis. That includes improving reimbursement rates for a potential 20-bed facility for patients who need a higher level of care. Now, besides this gleaming new addition, providers here at Acadia Hospital are taking other steps to put kids on a better path, both emotionally and mentally. Therapists are screening kids at schools in Penobscot, Somerset, and Washington counties to catch symptoms of mental health, such as depression, sooner. In Bangor, Vivian Lee, New Center, Maine. Now, under LD-131 passed by both houses, DHHS must report back in January about the rules it will adopt to set up a pediatric residential treatment facility. Maine Health plans to add eight new adolescent beds at Spring Harbor Hospital, which is in Westbrook, sometime this fall. We will have much more information about what the state and providers are doing to address this crisis in the New Center Maine app.